You're listening to Adishokbe Live, the Afrobeat podcast. Right. Am I piano the sound of the summer? Yes or no? Absolutely. Yes. If you're not listening to Ama Piano, <laughs> there's something wrong with you, okay? Yeah. Thames's story is one to inspire a lot of people yes. that it can be you next. I remember two, three years ago with Thames messaging me and thanking me for playing her music. I've got those messages. Aww. Her manager saying, you know, my, this is my artist two, three years ago. You know, I remember the conversations I had with Thames where she was speaking specifically about quitting her job to focus on music and, and doing it from her bedroom. Mm. And now she is the toast of the culture, she the is toast the one of the to world. Watch. Yeah. The Afrobeat Podcast. Right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to a brand new edition of Adi Shopper Live, the official Afrobeats podcast here at the Afri Media Studios in London, where we break down the hottest topics within the culture, and sometimes we have a special guest here too. This time is going to be the headlines alongside my special guest from the Dreams and Money podcast. It's the beautiful Norma. Hi, I'm glad to be back. From Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why was that information relevant? Listen, eh? man, I, I just think, you know, we, you know we love Zimbabwe, so... I you know, know you do. <laughs> <laughs> I know your people love Zimbabwe. But yes, uh, welcome, Norma. How have you been over the last couple of weeks? It's been a very I... hectic summer, actually. It's been a busy summer. It's been a good summer. Yes. It's been a great summer. I've enjoyed myself. I've really summered as I should have. Yeah, so we can't complain once it gets cold and believe me, it has started oh, listen, to get cold. It's, it's cold out in these streets now, for real. But no, it's been a great summer. I've been well. How have you been? You've been doing your thing, by the way. Let, You've been doing great things. I've been watching you. I see you. it, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, welcome to the podcast. Uh, as always, a big shout outs to all our supporters from LA Media, uh, Shoops.com. Make sure you go out to Shoops.com to check out tickets to all the beautiful events across the board here in the United Kingdom. And if you're a promoter that's looking to sell out your event, this is shoes.com and upload your events on there because we've got a lot of people waiting to go to your event and make sure you get shoes in now. Well, some of the headlines we'll be looking at will be uh, Thames on Jimmy Kimmel Live, David O on the Today Show with Trevor Noah, and I'm a Piano UK Invasion. I'm sure you love that one, isn't it? I loved it. I was here for it. Absolutely. Now, let's start in the USA where fast rising singer Thames is on a massive roll. Firstly, her hit collaboration with Whiskey Essence, you don't need no other body, has broken the charts worldwide, becoming the unofficial song of the summer, making so superstar Justin Bieber hop on the remix. Well, since the success of the hit, Thames has most recently been featured on Drake's new album, and she has released an EP featuring R&B singer, I think it's Brent Fires, uh, and then um, currently topping the Afrobeats UK charts. She's the number one lead single there. And doing crazy numbers too. She has also been seen having dinner with Drake, with rumors of another collaboration about to drop, and having a close conversation with Rihanna. And now a few nights ago, she appeared on the late night show with Jimmy Kimmel, where she performed a song from the EP. Uh, it's the year of the Thames, isn't it, Norma? It is. And you know when God just says, mm. this is your year, mm. God really says, this is your year. And Thames is an example of that. Mm. And I love that for her. I love to see black women flourish. I love to see black women succeed. I love to see black women reach new heights mm. and exceed the heights that have been set by the women before mm. them. Mm. So I absolutely love to see that she, you know, she's blossoming. And the fact that she's apparently now the number one... Uh, most streamed, streamed African, African artist. artist. She's got the most listeners. The number one. She's got the most Incredible. listeners on Incredible. Spotify. I love it. I love it for her and for the movement. And mm. for, once you start reaching and being on platforms like Jimmy Kimmel, yes. you know you, you've, you've arrived. blown. Yeah. And you're about to reach the next level. So that's just like the stepping stone. Yeah. And now things are just about to get crazier and crazier. And not like, you know, you've now reached America. And then once you hit America, you've obviously hit Europe. Yeah. And then now comes South America yeah. and everywhere else. She's currently so touring amazing. in the United States of America. It has to be said that in the last 12 months, um, 
She's had uh, amazing co-signs. There was a video with her and Adele where Adele was singing, Why are you gonna try me? Her mm -hmm. song back to her. We wow. saw her having dinner with Drake. We've seen her having a close conversation with Rihanna where Rihanna was telling her to own her success and yes. stop being that humble about it. Yes. We saw her uh, singing to Dave's piano antics mm -hmm. in L.A. We saw her, you know, attending the Oscar after party of, um, what's his name now? The, the, the British Ugandan brother that won the Oscar this year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was at that as well. So she's really had an amazing 12 months that looks to even be getting crazier. Performing at Jimmy Kimmel Live, just as you said, is an incredible feat. I think um, Thames' story is one to inspire a lot of people yes. that it can be you next. I remember two, three years ago with Thames messaging me and thanking me for playing her music. I've got those messages. Aww. Her manager saying, you know, my, this is my artist, two, three years ago. You know, I remember the conversations I had with Thames where she was speaking specifically about quitting her job to focus on music and, and doing it from her bedroom. Mm -hmm. And now she is the toast of the culture, she the is toast the of the to world. Watch. Yeah. It's incredible. I can't even imagine how she feels to see mm. her dreams come true, to see her idols become... Her friends, Ooh. her confidants, the people that are saying, I'm a fan of you. Could you imagine? That's crazy. The people you've looked up to for so long and the people you're like, wow, one day I would love to maybe work with them or just have a conversation. Mm. For them to say, I love what you're doing. I'm a fan of your music. And for them to sing your songs back to you. Yeah, that's oh, crazy. She's living her best life. I love it. I love it. And I what about Essence, imagine. man? We need to give Whiskey a lot, a lot of credit. Um, yeah. Essence is... Shout him. out to him for that and giving her the platform. And I absolutely appreciate when huge artists give smaller artists the platform to mm. flourish and the platform to showcase their skills and their talents and to put them on a... Put them on a um, on a new yeah. pedestal yeah. and a new level and a new height. And the video That's director, the video director said that you know when they were shooting the video, Wizkid paid particular attention and said, please make sure she comes out a particular way. He wanted yeah. her to come out strong and and big and whatever. And he gave those instructions to the video director. Where in some cases, a lot of the artists don't want their collaborators to outshine to them. Outshine and, them. But it looked like he just wanted her to be the best she can be. And when you get to that level of success, you know, when you reach the Davido level, the Wizkid level, the Burner Boy level, mm. you know other people also gave you mm. that hand and mm. they pulled you up. So I think it's admirable that he wanted to also give a hand and to pull her up and to let her shine yeah. as the beautiful, talented woman that she is. So I think that's absolutely amazing of him. And she carried that song and did a beautiful, beautiful job. Um, of course, shout out to Justin Bieber for jumping on that and making it even bigger. Yeah. Both you know, singles than, than have become uh, platinum in wow. America. The original and the remix Incredible, platinum. Incredible. And I just hope that she's really eating from this no, whole situation. She, she is, definitely. Without yeah. doubt. Uh, well, staying in the United States of America, where superstar David O, also known as King David, Made an appearance of his own on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Uh, David O, who also has been seen partying with the likes of Nas, Dave East, spoke about his last album, Afrobeats, uh, you know, the NSARS movement. And more importantly, how the Nigerians slash Africans in diaspora don't joke with the artists. And they're the main reason they are where they are now worldwide. Yes. Um, let's take a listen. We don't even know this guy. He's come to America, has done 20 shows, sold out. But we have to give shout out to the people that support us. Yeah, I feel it's, you, man. And with Nigerians, I don't know what it is, but they don't play with us. Well, Norma, you, you've, you've seen that. Uh, David believes the African and Nigerian fans in diaspora have played a major role mm -hmm. to their success. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I agree, mm. especially the UK. Of course, I'm not going to ignore America and what they're doing. No, but we the need to UK always talk about the UK. has well, been yeah, flying the, the flag for Afrobeats. We, we are ride or die for Facts. Afrobeats artists. Facts. From, you know, Davido to Wizkid yeah. to every, every single one of them. One of them one we of them. are ride or die. And we've been flying the flag for African music for so long. Yeah. 
So now it's at a stage where America is appreciating it and other continents are appreciate, appreciating it. It's, it's great to see. Mm. And no, he's absolutely right that, you know, the diaspora are the ones that have made sure that it doesn't everybody die he- off. And everybody hears and about it. Everybody us. hears it. And we are standing behind it from, you know, the DJs to people Fact. like you to the NRs Fact. that are making sure that it does not die and it reaches new levels and new levels and new heights. You know, it's Absolutely. Great Fantastic. Shout out to David on that, man. Now, over to the UK, where this summer the sound of the city was none other than Amapiano. Amapiano. <laughs> the South African genre uh, had some of its hottest stars in the UK for concerts, parties, and all round promotions, which made it impossible not to be a fan of the music. Stars like Dibi and Gogo, Kamun Fela, Major League DJs, Focalistic, and superstar Casper Nioves, to name a few, were all present over a three week period appearing. Any and everywhere from Dublin to Manchester to London, ensuring we all loved the genre. Well, I hosted and attended a few of those events. Oh, yes, you so did. shout out to my people of Pi Radio in Manchester, big love uh, for for you know allowing me to come and be a part of that party and be a part of everything. But if any genre in Africa or from Africa wants to penetrate the UK movement, just follow what the South Africans did. This summer, attack it together and you will get massive results. Am I piano the sound of the summer? Yes or no? Absolutely. Yes. If you're not listening to Ama Piano, <laughs> there's something wrong with you, okay? Yeah, if you don't like Ama Piano, there's I mean, something wrong yeah, with you. Yeah, step out of the party. I'm man. saying it today. There's something yeah. wrong with you. Because what? Ama Piano has been ruling. Like, I'm so happy as mm. a Southern African, as a Zimbabwean, I'm so happy to see. Um, the South Africans mm. really thrive and grow, and even the Zimbabwean, South African based yeah. producers yes. and the artists, you know, so people like Shasha who are flying the flag mm. and doing amazing with Ama Piano. I'm so happy to see that the genre has really grown. Yes. You know, I was in South Africa in 2019, December, and that's when I really fell in love with the genre. Yeah. 2019 December and then over lockdown it started to grow yeah and then thankfully now that we're open the artists are and able all to of them come came in. at the right time at this the is something perfect time that Nigerian where... artists have always done come into town together yeah. and attack different venues they're doing it in America at the moment shout outs to the likes of whiskey to to Rema to Burner boy on my later mm-hmm. they they're all touring together and they killed it yes. they killed so the it piano I guys love the collaboration mm. from the Amafest. Amafest was amazing. Shout yeah. out to the um, organizers of that, to the major league DJs. Of yeah. course, you were there yeah. and yeah. you were supporting <laughs> that major event. League, it was major crazy. League crazy yeah. Major league DJs shut it down. Absolutely. If you didn't attend any of the of any of the shows, major league DJ shows, I'm so sorry. You haven't you attended the party, out. basically. Like, and I remember they they came on and it was like the first ten minutes. I said, "Yo, it's crazy. they're crazy." First 10 minutes, they shut it down, and we've got like an hour to go of their set. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. So I love to see that the, the culture is growing, and I hope to see it grow and explode in the same way that Afrobeats did mm. and just be global. I mean, it's already global now, but just yeah. to see it on that level where, you know, we have people like resident Leading DJs. superstars. And, yeah, just, you know, just have things like Ama Fest or Ama Piano Festivals mm. be a regular thing mm. and not just a one-off would be amazing to see. So, yeah. And, and finally, a point on that is exactly what I said. If any artist, genre, or people want to attack a market, the way the Ama Piano guys attacked the UK this summer is a blueprint. For they sure. came together. They came in force. They attended parties from co- concerts that had thousands of people to parties that had just tens of people. There yeah. was an ambassador in the room any and everywhere around the UK. And that brought so many people in to enjoy the culture that were not even part of that culture. And for me, for it to grow even bigger, I would say 2022 summer, let's run it back. Oh my God, it's about to be crazy. Everybody comes again. Do that two times in a row and you've got a staple. Absolutely. Facts, don't wait for anybody to book you. Book your own flight. When you are in town, the Announce phones will ring. Absolutely. People will, exactly. will pay you to come to Birmingham and come to... And from there, you start to build. A lot of mistakes, a lot of people, artists make. 
is the way for promoters to book them. It's a wrong move. When you're buzzing, when something is happening, try as much as possible to get money, get investment, and come out here and promote yourself. When you're here, that promotion helps to cross that bridge into the diaspora. And more, the most important diaspora market in the world, I dare to say it, is the United Kingdom when it comes to African yes, music. absolutely. We love music so much and we love Africa that we will be that springboard to bring it. Yes, Major League DJs are listen. in LA right now. They're killing it in LA they right are, now. They're about to be crazy. And I think I the videos... It of how successful their shows were in the UK mm -hmm. would also excite the people in America. Like, yo, we yeah. need to get these guys Like, we over. need them here. Mm. We need them here. And they're going to be booked and busy for the next few months. I mean, for the next few years. And like you were saying, mm. I remember watching Casper and Your Vest perform at Armour Fest. Mm. Um, and then I saw him perform again a couple of weeks later yeah. at the show that was at Maid Lounge. Yeah. And the fact that he performed with the same energy, the same vim, the I same love, Manchester. same the thing. same interaction same that he, he still had for his fans, I was like, this is what we're here for. And this Absolutely. is what I love to see. And that's somebody that sells 90,000 capacity stadiums in South Africa. Yeah. 50, 70, 90. So yeah. to and him... The man can dance too. I was like, sir, teach me a When I first met him. him years ago, he was almost like a backup artist and dancer to HHP. Oh, wow. About 10 years ago in London. I've got videos. If you see him dancing then, it's the same thing. Amazing. He's always been amazing. So shout out to the entire Southern African movement. I'm a piano. Absolute yeah. shutdown. Let's run it back in 2022. Now, have. staying in the UK, I had the pleasure to appear before a select panel of MPs on foreign affairs to discuss Afrobeats and its impact on Nigeria. I appeared alongside superstar Pato Rankin, and we spoke about the successes, challenges, and how the British government can assist in ensuring this genre sits at its rightful place on the global scene. Uh, big shout outs to the event horizon team, Obi, Natasha, Frankie, the whole team behind that movement, and Jonathan as well for making that happen. Let's take a listen to the snippets. Well, uh, like Apple and Spotify and Tidal, and how much importance they and power they wield with, within the music industry. We hope that within the Apple Beats industry, that we're starting those platforms and international record labels. Firstly, create, uh, you know, recognize Afrobeats as a genre. That's number one. And second of all, they come into that genre to look at people that are specialists within this genre, to advise, to support, and to work in those spaces to ensure that we, 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 we finally break in and whatever percentages are due to us with respect, with finance, with support, those people will be able to fight for what is ours. What sadly happens at the moment is that those, the, the bigger platforms and the record labels have people in position that have nothing to do with the culture, know nothing about the roots of the culture, are just coming in as technocrats. And when that happens, they can't see the opportunities that the genre needs to go to the next level, what they see is an opportunity to get, to, to get themselves to the next level. So we need professionals within our genre, within our culture, to be given opportunities in bigger places and bigger platforms to ensure that this gets the recognition that it deserves. So to summarize what um, Adi just said, um, just put us in that room. We want to be in that room. <laughs> just put us in that room where those decisions have been made. We want to be there. You were probably maybe the last person I spoke to before I went live to oh, the really? UK Parliament. Yeah, I think you were. To the UK Parliament um, and, and, you know, speak about Afrobeat, something that's there to me. Um, it was an absolute honour to to have such a situation uh the day was to discuss nigeria so they spent an hour and a bit to discuss afrobeats and you know the new emerging genre what it meant to the culture how it's impacted the young people how we can take it forward and what we look at for support and stuff like that and for me getting that opportunity i think was such a blessing but for me it also just shows that you know we're doing something right. Yeah. 
we are doing something right. Exactly. And I want to give you your flowers once again because you have been it, flying the flag in every single room that you're in, whether it's mm. just a conversation with five people and it's just, you know, your colleagues to the UK Parliament. Can I just... You're doing amazing. And the one thing that I loved was the fact that, you know, you pointed out to the importance of making sure that the people that this genre comes from and is inspired by are the ones that also benefit. Yep. Because I don't, unfortunately, I don't, I would hate to think this, but I'm sure if we looked at the numbers and the people that are eating and the money and the people that are benefiting from this genre are probably not the Africans. Right. And the ones with the biggest pie and eating the biggest yeah. piece of the pie from this whole genre and the movement are not us. Yeah. And I hate that. So the fact that, you know, you really make sure to emphasize, yep. like, can we be in the room? Yep. Can we be the, as a tastemakers, can yep. we also be the decision makers? Facts. Can we also be the ones to benefit from this? Facts. It's absolutely important. Um. Right. And another thing that you guys pointed out was the fact that, you know, this is now a million to billion dollar yep. export. Yep. I never thought of it like that. It's an export. It's a massive export. I never export. thought of it as an export because in the in the same way that, you know, we have, um, let's say, oil and gas yes. and all of these other it things is. that we export to other countries. This is it. Nigeria, Ghana, South yes. Africa is now exporting these genres and culture to the rest of the world. To the rest of the world. Where people are consuming it and paying top dollars yes. for that. So it's a very important part of, of the African story now that a lot of people really need to pay attention. We need the policymakers to make you know, policies that would help these young creatives. There's how how did that feel for you, can I just say? Like how how it did it feel to finally be in the rooms that you you wanted to mm. be and to make sure that you're influencing the influencers, yeah. yep. you're influencing the people that have the power in their hands to really make changes. It was nerve-wracking, it was humbling at the same time, but it was also an awakening moment that if we want things to happen, we want changes, we need to be having these conversations with these people. Yes. We need to be, uh, and, and that's around the world. That should be in Nigeria, that should be in Ghana, that should be in South Africa. We need to emphasize, state our claims, and ensure that everybody is fully aware of what we expect, what we want, and what we bring to the table. Yeah. For a long time, even the creatives are not, they've not been aware of what they've brought to the table, how they've changed lives, yes. changed images of countries that changed have been negative culture. cultures. You know, they've not been aware of that. So now it was an awakening moment for me that we should now be aware. It's almost like know who you are, know what you bring to the table and know how you affect the people. And it's time to start sitting at the table, engaging this sort of people yeah. to ensure they make policies that help and not hinder the creatives and the people around the culture. So we hope that from this conversation, it opens more doors, that we have many more. And like you said, the people within the culture to start benefiting from that. Absolutely. 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 And not just the ones in the diaspora, but the ones from the culture, still back home. From Absolutely. the culture, the people that are the creatives, the people making the, the stuff. Yeah. You should, anybody that's part of that whole chain or the bridge should you know, eating eat from, that, Absolutely. from that same pie. Now, over to Ghana, where the new iPhone 13 is causing a stir amongst the entertainment industry as outspoken TV personality and actress, if you are those slammed other celebrities who have publicly flaunted their iPhone 13 on social media, calling them an, um, an embarrassment, and I quote, why is acquiring the latest iPhone such an accomplishment to many Ghanaians? This really baffles me, and I need answers, because it's quite embarrassing, especially seeing celebrities posing with their new iPhones, end quote. It has to be mentioned that some top celebrities such as Nana Agrada, uh, Tracy Boache, Nana Aba Anamua, I hope I pronounced it well, and Twenty Jonas have all recently been seen flaunting their new purchased iPhone on social media. Well, Sister Efia, who is an arch nemesis of Efiodo, apparently wrote in the comment section, which 
It's spelled M-T-E-W, by the way, if you want to know what that is. Ask an African around the corner what that is, or Caribbean. Or what? kiss my teeth, in other words. Exactly. Other um, which triggered a back and forth with each other, a sister Afia called Efia Odor a skeleton, and Efia called her a hippo, saying, uh, <laughs> where was this energy when we met face to face, apparently both of them came face to face a couple of days previously at a, on a film set and Sister Ifia didn't have this energy. However, let's go back to the point. iPhone 13. Uh, full disclosure, I've also seen some Nigerian celebrities posing on social media with their iPhone 13s. Is it an embarrassment? Is you, Ifia right? Do you or, care to name those celebrities? Um... Which one did I see? Well, there was a dude in Dubai, successful guy, that had, was posing with it. Yeah. But, but yeah, what well, is it? An embarrassing thing or? No, it's it's not an embarrassing thing. I think I get what she was trying to say. However, the delivery mm. was a little bit wrong. Um, we live in a society where we have social media, yes. and with social media we have become a generation of people that like to show off. Mm. If we get a new bag, we will show it off. Yeah. You get a new phone, it's like, oh, guys, look, I've got the new iPhone. Because mm. it literally just came out, isn't it? Sure. So yeah. it really is just a part of... It's part of the culture just now. part of the culture now. You know, like, we just show off ev anything and everything. Mm. Whether it's the, oh, someone's in the club and they're popping bottles. Yeah. And it's a particular they bottle. A brand new car. You know, a it's new a brand house. new car. It's a new house. Yep. You show your keys. It's a bottle of champagne you just opened. You make sure, like, you, you show the popping mm. on Instagram. You know, you've got a new pair of trainers but and it's red same, bottoms. But in the same... You put your foot up but to in show the, everybody but in the red same, bottoms. in the same vein, isn't uh, a, a checker like if your those comments necessary as well? Just to remind yeah. us that, you know... Like is we it might necessary? be exactly no I I I I kind of agree with her it's it's not always necessary yeah like um I think again I think the delivery is what kind of ruffled people's mm, feathers particularly mm, because she was aiming it at at the specific these, celebrities at, at the speci exactly even though she didn't mention the names but these were names. the people that had publicly yeah shared you know and images. I'm sure you know they're not the only people that have got the new iPhone and and have shown it on Instagram. But, you know, I think she, she does have a point. Is it everything that we need to show to people? Like, especially oh God, a communication guys, look, device. Look at me, you mm. know. And especially because they are African celebrities and not everybody has, has the access and the ability to have an iPhone. iPhones are expensive. Yes. I think we forget because you look around and everybody has one. But iPhones are expensive. They're yes. like a thousand pounds minimum yeah. for every single new release. And yeah. not everybody can fathom the idea of a thousand pounds being spent on a device. Mm. And it's not even a laptop. It's not, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's literally it's just a phone, phone that you put in your pocket yeah. and you take everywhere with you. So I think we do forget that not everybody has, you know, the, mm. the, the money to afford some of these things. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a case of being sensitive to that, particularly mm. as a celebrity, mm. knowing that, look, um, I represent people i represent my people yeah and not all my fans can afford this mm. I, I i know it's something that people would then aspire to like yeah. oh she's got an iphone i want one too however i think sometimes with the showing off culture it's created a generation of young people that want to achieve so much yeah and are trying to be you know like it's very materialistic yeah very yes. materialistic yeah and we're always trying to show off and kind of maybe one up each other yeah or you see somebody you're like oh i want that Oh, she's got that Louis Vuitton bag. I want that now too. You didn't care about the Louis Vuitton bag. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You wouldn't even think about it. But now you see one, two influencers, you one, two celebrities. That's why they're called influencers. And you, and you know, and you know, like, oh, I want that. And I've, there's been times where I've seen something, not because oh, I someone. really care, yeah, not because yeah. I cared for it or I've seen it in person, but because I've seen maybe one or two influencers and then maybe another friend that was able to afford it. Me too now, I want it. I mm. want that YSL bag now. Mm. I want the new iPhone 13. Why? Mm. It's because mm. I've seen it being shown off so much. And it's like in my face all the time. So now I feel like everybody else but me has, has an iPhone. It. Mm. Everybody else but me has a new bag. Everybody else has but me can afford to be in the club popping bottles or on holiday or doing all these things that I can't afford. Mm. 
But again, because of social media and because we're seeing these things in our faces 24-7 and the amount of time we spend on social media. I I just think, yeah. Now you're like, everybody else is doing this but me. me. I I think, you know, I understand that people definitely have the right to show whatever they want to show on social media. It's your money. You Mm -hmm. can spend it how you want. Mm -hmm. But I also see the, the need that we also just need to be slightly careful, especially if you're coming from developing yeah. countries where the, the the vast majority cannot afford some of the lifestyle that we promote and some of the stuff that we show. Then yeah. we have to be slightly sensitive to those. Um, Absolutely. I Absolutely. see both points, um, but maybe it was, as you said, Effia's words that rub people the wrong way. But I, I'm definitely slightly leaning towards her uh, yeah. in saying, you know, having a brand new iPhone it's not really something to celebrate and, yeah. and, and to showcase around the world. But hey. It's not that exciting that each, it deserves a whole entire post. Exactly. It's not that each serious. to its own. Mm-hmm. Now, to over own. to South Africa, where there's been a, 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 a bit of feud between former collaborators and hit producers. I believe Maporisa and, yeah, Maporisa and Makwa. The, li- the latter fired shots at Maporisa claiming allegations. He was the one that, uh, that no, cl- claiming allegations that he was made by Maparisa were false and insinuating that he showed Maparisa the way with new vibes and new tools Mm. to use in the production studio. Well, Maparisa responded by Instagram Live saying Makwa was on drugs, hence why he is talking trash and needs to stay away from that substance as it's putting him in a lot of mess. Maporisa hasn't been one to shy away from speaking his mind on issues that affect him, and this isn't uh, out of character. However, having to respond publicly to a former collaborator in such a manner is out of character. Um, yeah. Maporisa is an iconic producer, a legendary entertainer from South Africa, yes. who is responsible for some of the genres and hit records that we've enjoyed over the last decade. Um, a public fu- feud with a former collaborator, yay or nay? Amaporisa is a legend. You know, mm. he's given us some of the best hits. Yep. Um, so, you know, to see him kind of come out and say, you've lost your mind. Yeah, you're using drugs, um, you're doing that, yeah. It's kind of like, put some respect on my name. Yes. I think that's what he was trying to say, essentially. Mm. You've lost your mind. Mm. Remember who Remember I who am. I am. Remember what I've done. Remember what I've contributed to this culture. Hmm. So put some breaks on whatever you're smoking yeah. or whatever you drank that morning, whatever tea you're drinking, hmm. less relaxed and remember, remember who ourselves. you're talking to. Because essentially I've, like you said, I've contributed hmm. to these genres and, and to, to your the career. culture. And, and to your career too. So in some of these conversations, you know, like, like we've spoken about this in the past yeah. about celebrity feuds where have these conversations behind the scenes. It doesn't always need to be public. But also, I'm very aware that sometimes these celebrities will create feuds for the attention, for the the clout, and for the spotlight. Sometimes the media as well, we we ask one or two questions that trigger that. That trigger it. But then it's it's a cycle, isn't it? It's a cycle. Mm. Like the one feeds the other. But again, and, and my point was, it's like, you may think, oh, okay, I've got a project coming up. Mm, I need to create. Some hype on that. You know, and he probably wouldn't. I'm not saying that's what he was doing, yeah. but he's not the first person to do it. Yeah. And he's not the last person to do yeah. it. In the name of PR, in the name of media coverage, in the name of being a trending topic, yeah. and you know people are going to be talking about you. And then next thing you know, okay, the streams are going up and people are now going back into the Maporisa archives yeah. to listen. You're now going back to the, um, what's his name again? Makwa. Makwa archives to be like, oh, actually, did he bite his sound? Mm. Did he copy? Did he copy his sound? Who did copied he, too? Yeah. You know, so again, now you're a trending topic, you're trending, and people are listening to the music just for comparison to say, actually, maybe Maporisa did copy him. Mm. Maybe Makwa did do this. So again, I, I get it, but I think sometimes it's just a, it's a it's marketing ploy. It's, yeah, it's a marketing ploy. It's a necessary... But we're here for the drama. We love a bit of juice. <laughs> As they say. <laughs> uh, no publicity is bad publicity. On that note, we end this episode's yes, uh, Addis Chopin Live, the official Afrobeats podcast. Make sure you subscribe, like, share, comment. We appreciate the support. As always, Afro Media Studios, LM Studios, and the beautiful 
Norma for coming into the studio. Thank I'm, you for having I'm gonna me. I'm going to drag you out again, again uh, very soon, as we always do here. As we do. Uh, but until then, from us to you is peace, and we're out. Right. 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 Right.